Hey, what's up? This is your girl, Taylor Wiles, and you're listening to my very first episode of my brand new podcast, Wild On. Why a podcast almost after 10 years of retirement from professional wrestling? Stigmatization or not, most women in the wrestling business get hired predominantly on their looks. No doubt it helped me in my career too. But I want my fans and listeners to hear what I have to say, hear my voice, my opinions, and the heart that drove my career that fell short. It seems like everyone has a podcast these days, and I completely agree. What makes mine different? This one is just about the ladies of professional wrestling, hosted by a woman who's lived it. And I've lived. This is about the intimate side of female wrestlers. I want to talk about the things that often get missed. I want to talk about friendships, the sisterhood, being on the road, marriages, divorces, pregnancy, children, music, and menstrual cycles. Oh yes, (laughs) this podcast is not for the faint of heart. This one is for us, the misfits. The warriors in sparkly spandex who don't seem to fit in anywhere but in the bizarre world of professional wrestling. I am you, and I want to tell our story. But before we begin, this space is a space of acceptance. Just because I'm focusing on women doesn't mean my podcast isn't for everyone. I am an LGBTQ plus supporter. This is a safe, open place of inclusion. So here we go. Episode one, Taylor Wilde, past, present, and future. The question I've been asked the most since I retired is, why did you retire from professional wrestling at 25 years old? Most arguably the time that most professional wrestlers peak in their careers. The truth is, I don't have a simple answer. My answer is multidimensional. At the time of retirement, I would have told you it was because I am a realist, a borderline pessimist, sprinkled with a little healthy dose of cynicism, which was basically just an inflated way of saying, I'm always looking to the future instead of just enjoying the moment. I was 25. But at 25, I was really starting to panic. At the time, 25 started to feel really old, old for what I envisioned for myself. The spotlight in the knockouts division was starting to dim. Storylines were starting to feel diluted, and my character was massively lacking direction and substance. I don't have regrets, but I do reflect on the things I could have done differently, better even. I was young, polite, I'm Canadian, and not polished enough to push. Push for what I deserved and push for what I knew I could have really become. I needed to be my own biggest advocate. But at that time, around 2011, management was shifting. The TNA knockouts were no longer the focus. The diversity in the women's division was starting to thin out. And to top it all off, I was majorly burnt out. I have never been shy or one to mince my words. I've always stood up for myself, sometimes to a fault. I've heard many times, or I've been referenced as being a pipple. You know, those really cute, vicious dogs that kill children, the ones who latch on, get lockjaw, and they shake until they get what they want? Yeah, that's me. But at the time, I felt that my voice was no longer relevant, and no one would have listened even if I would have spoken up. Being a professional wrestler had started to feel like work. I know, what an oxymoron. You put on sparkly diets at the beginning of the day, you walk through smoke machines, and you fake fight, and that's work, but it had. So I went with my gut, and I retired. And then that made me the black sheep of professional wrestling, especially around my fellow wrestlers. No one retires before 30, especially not 10 years ago. I think it's become more commonplace, even acceptable nowadays, since there's way more focus on both physical and mental health of professional athletes. 
you hear more and more about young retirees with career-ending injuries. But 10 years ago, wrestlers weren't leaving on their own accord. I mean, professional wrestlers have a long history clawing and gripping and being basically ripped away from the spotlight, kicking and screaming. If you've seen the wrestler starring Mickey Rourke, that is a perfect depiction of what happens to the mass majority of professional wrestlers. I've been at this since my 19th birthday. I was tired. But don't get me wrong. I had a blast. Girl, I have got some stories. I got to travel the world. I got to hang out with some of my favorite people, perform in some of the world's most famous venues, like Wembley Arena. Ugh, amazing. I'll never forget. I was in a tag match with my partner, Sarita, and she had told the announcers that it was my birthday. So after I made my entrance, standing in the middle of the ring in front of 20,000 people, they sang me happy birthday. I did all of this while earning a paycheck. It was fun. It was so fun. But good Lord, it was not glamorous. I have slept in bathtubs. I have changed in greasy restaurant kitchens. I've been jammed into extremely small cars with very big, sweaty, protein powder farting wrestlers. And I've performed at country fairgrounds in between prized cow contests. No exaggeration. But I relish in having been part of a circus counterculture. I was part of a traveling freak show. But then what happened? A lot. I dove headfirst into real life. I was desperate to achieve some normalcy because I felt like a misfit nomad with an empty ass resume. No place felt like home. The road had become home, but that's not home. I was never actually home, so that didn't feel like home. And it's pretty impossible to date when you're never in the same place or city for more than a few days. Other wrestlers are the only ones you can really relate to. And as much as I love my fellow wrestlers, let's be honest, we're not the most balanced individuals. I'm not saying don't date within the community. I'm just saying, be streetwise, choose your own adventure. So I went back to school. I finished my BA in psychology, which I had been shipping away at for years while I was on the road full time. It was expensive, time-consuming, and stressful. I got married, divorced, and married, and that's all you need to know. I've married the love of my life now. I went to Humber College for the pre-service firefighter training and education program. I took roughly a zillion rescue and emergency courses to build my resume. I volunteered at a woman's shelter. Talk about realness. Those women are so strong and resilient. And I was lucky enough to serve them daily meals and help organize their clothing drive for a few years. Oh my God, that's one thing I'd like to do again. I worked a bunch of nine to five jobs that I hated more than I can describe. Actually, I'm feeling a little bit ill thinking about it. It took four years, but I finally got hired as a full-time firefighter in 2015. And if anyone tells you that it is easier for visible minorities or women to get hired on the fire department, they're uneducated, small-minded jerks. Because when you apply, you are given a number. That number is assigned to you while you have given in your resume, you write an aptitude test, and then you do a physical test. Once you have finished in the top 10 percentile, then, and only then, when you have your interview, does your name replace the number you've been carrying? So you are nobody, you are not gendered, and you are not culturally, religiously labeled until the playing fields have all become even and you get to sit down and have a face-to-face interview. So this whole, it's easier being a visible minority or woman is not true. 
Being a firefighter is truly the best job in the world, and I'm so happy that things worked out the way they did. There's actually a lot of parallels to wrestling and firefighting, but that would be a whole episode in itself. I had a beautiful baby boy. Yes, his name is Taylor. No, I'm not a Mark. I did not name him after myself, my husband's idea. However, we were looking at gender neutral names, so back off. I bought a cottage with my husband and I'm basically living the Canadian dream. So what do you do when everything's working out? You shake the shit out of it. That's right. I started to get the itch. Not when you need cream or an antibiotic for, but the wrestling itch. It almost took 10 years, but I've got it. So I had plans, or shall I say I was booked for an international show to wrestle for a televised event at the end of March that everyone would have seen. But then this little thing called COVID-19 happened and changed the face of life as we know it. So that didn't happen. However, I'm planning to make a massive comeback. I am ready to show the world the Taylor Wilde that never reached her full potential her first time around. Because I'm no longer that young. I'm certainly not as polite. And I'm not just happy to be here. I have a fire in my belly. And I am so much stronger mentally and physically. I have grown so much as a person. I mean, I grew a human being inside my body. I am beyond ready to get back in the squared circle. And hopefully, the wrestling world is ready for me. Long live the upset queen. Because here comes Taylor Wilde 2.0.